I felt like I got thrown in side of a fire hose and there was no getting out. Like there was no effort, no trying. Jesus said in John, somewhere in John, I don't know off the top of my head, he said, you did not choose me, I chose you and appointed you to bear much fruit. And I, I felt like for me in that moment, that verse became the experience. Oh, you, you saw me. You were watching me. I was trying to run away from you. You never took your eyes off me. Do you see this happening? You, you hear my heart and you come in the room and you speak to me. And I, the way I would describe it is like the sin the poor decisions, the emotions, all of the stuff that had been swirling around and got me to the place where I was forced its way out of me. I couldn't stop it. You know, G- Paul said, it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. Like, like goodness grabbed me and said, come on, I'm taking you wow. to repentance. And that's what I felt like happened. It was like, I, I literally confessed everything. It was like thoughts actions that I hadn't thought about were forcing their way out from inside me and just coming out of my mouth, like almost like projectile vomiting sin out of my life was what it was happening. You know, like you can't stop it when it's like, I'm going to throw up. Like you're not, you're not holding that back. Yeah. That's what it felt like to me. Like I could not stop this thing if I tried. Now, if I tried, I, potentially he would have allowed me to. But at the same time in this moment, I was like, I was... I was caught in a current. I wasn't escaping, it felt like. And yeah. so, I, but potentially that's, my heart was ready for that. My mind was ready for that. My, you know, I'm, I'm pulling the trigger. And he's like, I don't want you to pull the trigger. I got, I got something else for you. And, and yeah, so for me, there was no effort. The effort was, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna end this. And he's like, you don't have to. What was the immediate difference that you felt the next day when you didn't have the same desires? So maybe before yeah. you would have done drugs, woke up the next day, had a certain feeling. Obviously, there's, there's always feelings of when you do something, even to this day, right? You, you stay up too late watching a TV show and you're yeah. like, oh, like I shouldn't have done that. Like yeah. it's kind of annoying. Yeah. You're like I shouldn't have shame or, or be upset about it. I need yeah. to get over it so I can pursue my life. But even to this day, I'll do things where I'm like, why did I go watch that YouTube video that's three hours from Joe Rogan last night? Like, yeah. Why did I do that? Yeah. And, and so the drugs, the decisions probably felt that way. Maybe even the, does the, there's the physical addiction and there's the mental addiction. Yeah. They, there's, they've talked about people that have physical withdrawals from, right. from drugs where they're mentally, they're like, I'm done. Yeah. And then their body's like going to die. You. And yeah. Jordan Peterson even went through this. He yeah. literally had to get, I think, put sedated where he was like put on anesthesia so that he could handle the withdrawals. in like Russia yeah because it like wasn't allowed cuz and he's a pretty mentally strong dude yeah super mentally strong now these are different drugs and all these things so people that are doctors or whatever but for you what was that experience like where you just woke up the next day and then 2 days later you're like sharing a testimony in front of kids were you feeling completely different completely no no desires no nothing like that it was nothing Damn. i never had a withdrawal I never had, never, like it was, it was gone. That's I, cool. I, you know, the only way I could describe it was like, I was, I was totally born again, like fully, yeah. body, soul, mind, heart, spirit, whatever, all of it was completely free. And I think like I had no shame, I had no guilt. I think my awareness of his forgiveness had swallowed up all the shame, all the guilt, all of that was gone. Like every, like I didn't have any regrets. I was like, wow, you're, I just had this awareness. Like you're going to turn this for good. You're going to use this. You're going to, so I think I was overwhelmed by a different reality. So much so that the shame couldn't stay. The guilt couldn't stay. You know, those emotions are healthy. Like it's, it's healthy to have emotions and go, You know what? I feel kind of crappy because I stayed up three hours watching Joe Rogan until two in the morning or whatever it is. Like those are healthy emotions. When a spirit attaches to them and now you have a spirit of shame, 
that won't allow you to get come out of it or won't allow you to be free from that. And you live, you know, it's like, dude, you don't want to live 10 years down the road and go, oh, that one day, Joe Rogan, three hours all night. I can't believe it. I've been yeah. fighting against this my whole life. Oh, something else is going on here. That's a different thing than just the healthy emotion of feeling shame. But I felt like mine was all wrapped up spiritually and it was, boom, it was gone. The way I describe it, like, Jesus stepped into my body, into my life, and everything else stepped out. And so I didn't have any withdrawals. I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't need help. I woke up the next day like, I need a Bible. Like, I haven't read a Bible. I went to my mom's house, took a Bible, took some old CDs that she had of worship music, and I'd sit in my house for like eight hours because like, I don't have a job. I don't have anything. So I just read my Bible, and, and I wrote all my friends' names on and started praying for them. And, like, I mean, I could tell you story after story. I, the one area I struggled with afterwards was porn. Mm. Like, I was delivered from drugs. I still, I was fine for a while. Porn was where, and cigarettes would try to creep in every once in a while, and, like, go buy a pack of cigarettes and I'd smoke one, get rid of it, smoke another. I'd be like, this is so dumb. What am I doing? And then I'd crush them and throw them away. Like, uh, so, but porn, porn is the one that I felt like God... Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Like, I wrestled with it mm. a little bit longer, like four years. I really wrestled with it. But the drugs, not even yeah. a hint. You, you had even touched on that you got swallowed up by the forgiveness side. Some guy had said something that I thought was interesting. It may be like elementary, but it, it kind of spoke to me. He said how the Bible talks about that he, he separates the sin like as far as the east, east is from, from the west. west. And he said, if it would have been north to south, if you go far enough north, you end up going south again. Yeah. So like it would not be that far because yeah. north from south is like, you know, even Elon Musk's little thing he talks about. He says, what's the place on the earth that if you were to go south one mile uh, and west a mile and then north a mile, you end up in the same place. And it's yeah. like from the North Pole because you go down and yeah. come back up. But if the east is from the west, if you go east, you never stop going east. Right. If you go west, and I just thought, Wow. wow, like what a thought, you know? Yeah. They could have really mucked that up, yeah. you know? And uh -huh. we cast your sin as far as the north, north is from the south, and we'd yeah. be like, oh, that's still pretty pretty decently far, yeah. but it's still easy to get back to. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, you go, you go from this place to e children's ministry, kind of walk people through how long ago that was and, and some of the things that you've done since then. Mm -hmm. I have some things I would love to jump into. Uh, and yeah, so kids. my mom calls me one day because I was going to Josh's church my friend who was like come to my youth club so i go to his church but she calls me and says hey this pastor is coming from new york you might want to come hear him he's great so i go this guy is, rips me apart like just preaching just oh i mean i still remember his sermon to this day this is 2001 oh i i i remember what he talked about and i went up to him after and said i want to come do your internship in new york city he's like all right go online fill it out i fill it out now what's interesting at this time was I had actually been arrested because what I didn't know was the SWAT team was watching me for drugs when I got saved and delivered. And so a couple months after I'm totally free,